Hi everyone and Merry Christmas. Hello Breeze. Uh, I know it's been a while since my last video, uh, but um, it was a busy fall, a busy summer. I didn't get out fishing near as much as I wanted to uh, with my new boat, but uh, upcoming I'm gonna have a, uh, you know, a, a couple of uh, boat videos coming up well, well into the spring, but still uh, I'll have them. Um, Duck hunting this year was uh, was not the greatest. Uh, we didn't have a really good acorn crop this year um, where I hunt. Uh, and the weather pattern was a little odd um, to bring the late ducks down for some late season diver and, and big mallard hunting. So that was hit or miss as well. Uh, boat performed well for me actually. Um, I'm making a couple of upgrades to it and I'll put those in a video. But, uh, you know, after 20 some years of hunting with my, uh, uh, my trusty Finale Montefeltro, and I use the word trust uh, very, very slightly, um, I've decided to um, move on and upgrade from it. Um, I had a few issues over the years and I really never paid attention. I always thought, you know, it was the gun or whatever. It, it just, uh, it, I didn't even know that with such a thing as called the Benelli click, but it would always happen to me uh, where, you know, I'd shoot once and then nothing. Uh, or, you know, I'd load it up and go to shoot and nothing. And um, I didn't realize that there was such a thing as called the Benelli click where you got to have it, you know, fully engaged. Then the inertia driven guns uh, are a little tricky um, if you don't have it shouldered properly on, on to, your, to yourself. Um, you know, the inertia does not uh, eject the shell or uh, you might eject the sh enough to eject the shell, uh, but not enough to when it slams back push that shell in and click um, the next one in place. So you get the click nothing um, to it, which is, you know, frustrating, disappointing. Never really understood why it did that until I started doing a little research on it when I was looking for a new gun. And then I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. When I was hunting all the time, I would have bruises on my um, bicep uh, between my shoulder and my bicep actually right in there uh, which tells me right there that I was you know not shouldering the gun properly uh, the gun was not um, the length of pull was not proper that proper to my size I'm not a very big guy I'm you know I'm five foot seven on a really good day um, so I don't have a really long reach um, so maybe I need to you know have a shorter uh, um, length of pull, I think they call it actually. You know, I'm not a gunsmith. I don't know, you know, I'm not heavy into guns. I like shooting them, obviously. I've hunted with them all my life. I know how to do it. I know how to do it safely. But, uh, you know, as far as all that technical stuff, that was always a little bit beyond me. But um, I spent a lot of time and I did a lot of research and, you know, trying to determine one best last gun to get. Uh, I wanted a true waterfowl gun, uh, one that was exceedingly reliable, one was built for waterfowling. Uh, and I narrowed my search down to two guns, and one was the Benelli SV3, and the other one was the Beretta uh, A400 Extreme Plus. Uh, both very comparable guns. One is inertia driven, one is gas driven. And um, honestly, the reliability uh, of the gas driven gun over the inertia driven gun, um, even if you don't quite seat it correctly on your shoulder, um, you're gonna get a reliable shoot and uh, shell eject and the next shell put in. Um, so that kinda, you know, kinda tipped the balance for me. I asked a lot of people a lot of questions and, um, and, and you know, that. It was kind of 50-50 as far as, you know, who liked what, you know, the Benelli or, or the, or the uh, A400. And, um, but for me, I, I decided to go with the A400. Uh, less recoil, uh, 
kind of helped with that with this uh, with this kickoff um, that they have on it. But I did go out and get it, and and uh, and there's here it is part of it. I've taken it apart actually um, a little bit, and the reason is is because uh, this comes with a um, length of pull of I believe 14 and a half inches, and it comes with a where's it at? a one inch spacer that you can put in so you can uh, increase this up because right now I think it's at 14 and a half. Um, you can increase this up to uh, 15 and a half or you can drop it down to 14. And right now I, I did these side by side for the length of pull between my two guns and uh, my Montefeltro and this and honestly um, the uh, Montefeltro was is the exact same as what came stock. So what I'm going to attempt to do here is uh, take off the spacer and just use the, st the stock. And so I'm just gonna go with a 14 inch uh, length of pull. I'm not gonna screw with the uh, cast at all. Um, I don't know enough about this uh, to want to adjust it. Um, there are a few tricks that they show that you can uh, you can do it with, but for right now, I took the barrel off. Uh, in other words, it just essentially to make it easier for me to um, to take this butt plate off. not know off the top of my head honestly if uh, it was required for me to uh, have new screws put in but apparently you can use the same screws it does come with longer screws should you want to use this with this for a really long reach I guess for a really tall individual okay so I got that I'm going to take that half inch spacer out and I'm just going to put this right back on Oh, this is getting old. I just don't know. Tried to go with a smaller screwdriver, and that's just not, just not having it.
okay. That one's imperfect. That one's imperfect. Okay, so now I went to 14 inches from 14 and a half and uh, that is probably going to fit me a little bit better, especially when I get a few more clothes on. Um, just a couple of things here. Now that I've got it stripped, and I'll show you how I put it back together. Um, but you see this. Uh, if you set this down and you just put it to the first line, it is a little tricky but it does come out there we go okay so now we can take that whole assembly out and it's pretty easy nothing to it um, and then there is a plug in here that comes with the gun uh, to make it a two plus one uh, two in the receiver one in the chamber so that satisfies your waterfall requirement and in most states, I believe, uh, it also comes with a plug for uh, one plus one, um, so that you can have one in the chamber and one um, in the receiver, and that's for sporting clays. Um, and that applies to you know this gun shoots two and three quarter, three inch, and three and a half inch shells, so it applies to all. Uh, all three um, type of shells that you you might use um, so putting it back together uh, fairly simple well actually you know what let, let me show you a little a little trick here um, now they give you this tool right here okay now this is a tool to uh, essentially you can take out your uh, spring for your plug uh, your cap everything out clean it out as needed also remove it's meant to remove your plug but it's a very very you know um, you got to be careful because that spring will come all the way out and it's a little difficult to get back in so if you really don't want to take the spring out and everything you just take needle nose pliers just be just be careful pay attention to what you're doing and I'm not an expert here but um, but that's it and uh, plug comes right out with that right there. Um, I didn't ding it up, I didn't do anything, but there, if you can see right there, there are, it's a little um, prong, I guess you could say. Uh, that's for the, that's for the four end cap. Um, and that's where you, that's where I stick the needle nose in that direction that way. So I can open them up a little bit further to get around that and then just drop that plug in. So. Uh, a little easier than they tell you to get the plug out uh, with just a simple needle nose pliers. The longer the needle, the better on the pliers. So I slide that back in. Now to uh, put this back together, we just take it, slide it on, goes right in. Um, in order to lock this in place, that's where the charging handle comes into play. Drop this down to uh, probably an eighth, and you can kind of see where it's at. Now this has got a little nipple on the end there, and I put that nipple up, okay? Once you put it up, it should snap into place just like that. Snapped into place, now you're good to go, okay? Um, I'm sorry there's a little bit of glare in the background there. Maybe I should shut that. That'll probably help a little bit better. So, um, yeah. Let's show that again, maybe without the glare. There, okay. So that goes in just like so. You drop the firing pin um, down. There's two lines. Uh, I drop it down the receiver right even with the black and you can kind of see the 
it, it actually twists and it, it actually opens up a nice hole. And then I take the nipple up and slide it in and then it should go in and should snap in just like that. And then it's locked into place, it's not coming out. I mean, well, my Benelli, I can actually take it and just pull it out at any given time. And over time, it's gotten a little looser, so it's gotten a little easier. Uh, very, very large charging handle here. Very, very large uh, button to uh, release your shell into your chamber, close your chamber, your chamber release button. Uh, but okay, so we got that in. Uh, the next spot here, I've got a 28 inch barrel on it. And uh, yeah, this was my Christmas present to myself. It just arrived yesterday. So obviously I've been just playing with it just a little bit. So that drops in just like that. You don't even have to drop your charging handle down. With my Benelli, I, had to, I would have to drop it down and it slid right in, but with Beretta, it just popped right in. Uh, take your forearm, four end cap, slide it down, and then this four end cap uh, just locks in place with a quarter turn. Uh, very, very nice feature on this. With my Benelli, I'd have to twist it about seven or eight times before it would finally come out. Uh, this uh, reminds me of the World War II bayonets um, on the end of the rifles of your M1. Um, it's just a quarter turn. It just goes in, drops in like that, and then you just twist it, quarter turn, to drop it right into place, and boom, it's locked into place. Uh, the cap uh, is already um, uh, pre-set up for uh, your sling, um, for a sling, and it's got a, it's got a, um, a nipple on the end for, for the sling on the bottom as well. Hopefully, you know, that is, this with this polymer, it's sturdy enough over time that that's never going to break. Um, you know, with the wooden handle, you screwed it in, and I never really ever had to worry about that. And if, if you did, you can always fill it with something and then, um, and then re-screw it in. Well, with these, it's pretty much set. So if that breaks off, that's it for your sling. Now, I bought a Benelli sling, and I'm going to be putting it on here shortly, but um, just wanted to show you a few things here. Uh, before I get started, the entire With sales this? of the Beretta uh, was about uh, being used for a waterfall gun. They got the grip on the on the four, four stock, they got the grip on the pistol, and it's a rubberized grip. Um, it's not sticky by any sense of the imagination, uh, but it's very easy to grip, okay? Um, it's got a raised rib. Um, it's got a 14 inch uh, cone in here, force cone, uh, to direct your shot uh, pattern a little bit tighter for you. Uh, it comes with five chokes, uh, two of which can't be used with steel. So your, uh, your cylinder, improved cylinder, and your modified all will um, be for steel shot and your two can probably be used with some heavy shot, maybe bismuth or something like that, something a little bit more malleable, um, or lead, obviously, uh, turkey loads, turkey hunting, full choke, and improved modified is what they call it. Um, that's the two chokes you can't use with steel. Uh, again, uh, the big sale for this was be used as a waterfall gun. Larger charging handle, larger button here, um, a app, uh, uh, a cut in recessed um, loading port, okay, right down here, which is fantastic. Um, now we, we got this open now, um, so we close it. Now we can load shells as needed into the chamber, and uh, I'm gonna show you that in a second, but first thing I'm gonna do is go, okay, this is a waterfall gun. The entire purpose is to use this gun with your waterfowl gloves. Now these are some hot shot gloves here. Uh, I do use them for waterfowling. Um, if it's not too wet out, if it is wet out, these things are about worthless because they're cloth inside, uh, cotton or whatever, and it brings the water into your glove and then you're cold. But uh, all in all, it's a decent glove, but you can see it's a fairly fat glove. Um, the charging handle, again, uh, 
very, very easy to grab with, with, the, uh, with the glove. Open it up. Um, the button here, very, very easy to use with the glove on the grip. Um, man, that made it a whole lot nicer removing that, uh, that spacer for me. Um, you know, everybody's going to have to check uh, their length of pull, but this is really going to work out well for me. Um, the safety is on, in the front of the trigger guard instead of the back. Uh, really what that boils down to is practice. You're probably all, all, all used to everything being down here, but honestly, when the birds are coming through, you know, you're going to sit there and go, oh, it's not there. Okay, it's there. Boom. And then pull up and there you go. So, um, see, like that. Uh, I don't have the muscle memory and I went right to the back side to, to take the safety, put the safety back on. It wasn't there. So it's all going to be about muscle memory in that regard. So there's a button here on the bottom of the receiver that you press and that will hold the breech open for you. Uh, so you can load a shell or just check, make sure there's nothing in there. Um, Obviously you can't load shells uh, with it open, so you close it. Um, and then let's see what it's like loading a three inch shell into this cutout receiver, which makes it really nice. Now they, uh, this guard on the receiver here um, goes up so far that it removes uh, pinching your finger in between the shell and this guard. So. Um, you want to test it out, we slide that in there, and boom, nothing. Boom, nothing. Okay, now one of the neat things about this gun, and I have to take off my gloves actually to do it, but, and I don't know if this is a pure accident or whatever, but, you know, usually with, a, with my Benelli, I'd have to, you know, release the shell eject it, release a shell, eject it. Uh, with this one, I can actually just pull this in and this button to, uh, to uh, close the chamber, you can actually pull on that and it will drop a shell right into your hands here. So you can just do that and pull your two shells out without actually loading a shell into the chamber at all. So it makes it nice and easy to, uh, to get a, um, get your shells out without putting one in the chamber. Um, just a safety feature, I guess you could say. Um, what else are we going here? Um, let's see here. Okay. So in order to drop a shell in, we have to push it. Oh, we have to push the button to drop a shell in. Okay, there's this button down here. It drops the shell in, and there we go. Now it's all ready to go. You drop a few more in your uh, in your receiver, and um, and you're ready ready to hunt. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, again, this is going to be really nice uh, for me. Right on my right on my cheek, perfect on my cheek. Now I've got bifocals on, which makes it ultra difficult to aim with my gun, but uh, it looks really good right there. I think I'm gonna be really happy with that. So that's it. Right now it sets 14 inches of pull. Um, from this distance here to the butt plate. Um, let me get my, it might be 14 and a quarter. Yeah, it's 14 and a quarter is what it ends up being. So 14 and a quarter. Um, so this spacer right here will get you to 14 and three quarters. Um, 
this spacer here will get you to 15 and a quarter and obviously together um, you can get up to 15 and three quarters uh, of total spacer total length of pull so there you go that's it in a nutshell super happy with the purchase i can't wait to start playing with it um i bought a few new toys for this gun and uh i'm gonna do some videos on that as well uh one is this right here and uh i can't wait to take that out for a spin this is the shot cam um this is a gen 4 shot cam uh I bought that in order to try to correct any bad habits that I may have um, in shooting my gun and improve my shooting overall. I also bought a uh, Champion Wheelie Bird 2.0. It's got uh, a remote on it as well as a foot pedal and I can throw a, a clay every 1.75 uh, seconds. And uh, it works from a distance of, oh, I don't even know, 100 yards or a little over 100 yards, I guess. It'll throw clays about 65 yards. So, you know, I can throw clays, you know, crossing in front of me. I can, I can walk and, and, and throw the clays and, and hit them from a few different directions. So I can't wait to take that out and try this, um, try that out. And I'll do some videos on that as well and see if the shot cam can actually help me. Uh, the shot cam, shot cam not only helps you as a, as a video blogger uh, doing to do videos, but it also is a training tool because it actually has a reticle right on the um, right on the screen, so it will tell you where you're pointed if you're shooting right under the target, in front of the target, up and on top of the target. If you're just pulling up and stopping before you pull the trigger, uh, which is another bad habit that happens a lot. Uh, that, that'll tell you that you're actually looking at your bead and not your game. Um, so a lot of good things can come of it if you just pay attention. Uh, and the best thing is, is that the resolution is so extreme, you can actually see your pellets uh, as they come out of your gun and, you know, either hit the clay or miss the clay or whatever it is. So it can, it can offer you a lot. And then, of course, there's a continuous video mode that um, will allow you to just film your hunt for a couple hours uh, if you so choose. Um, I probably would not opt for that be just simply because, you know, my gun is, you know, either up in the air or, or, or down or, or all over the place. You know, it's not just pointing out there, you know, maybe for a deer hunt, I guess if you have it resting on your um, gun rest in your stand, you know, it might be useful, but for duck hunting probably not but the shot cam it'll it'll um, the trigger actually triggers the video itself so it'll start recording about 15 seconds before you 10 seconds before you start shooting and then it'll stop maybe 10 seconds after you pull the trigger uh even if you pull the trigger three times or 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 more um and it'll erase everything else that it recorded so you're not burning up um, all kinds of memory on your camera so very very cool can't wait to try those two uh, uh, little toys out uh, as I uh, will look to a new adventure now uh, just a little thing everybody, everybody might ask well would you pay for this um, it's a funny story um, but before I do I just wanted to, to mention a couple of items why I, I, I purchased it number one um, like I said, I wanted a gun that's going to take me through my retirement and the end of my duck hunting career. I probably got, only got about 10 more years left of going out duck hunting, and I'll probably hang them up after that. Uh, number two, again, um, I was having issues with my Montefeltro that I wanted to eliminate uh, that Benelli click, so um, that's another reason. Number three, uh, this has a kickoff um, on it, which that with it with its gas discharge will eliminate probably about 70 percent of your kick uh from your shells so it'll eliminate about 70 percent of your recoil uh which is <coughs> really really good for an aging shoulder and um you know i picked the max 5 camel um 
probably the most realistic to where I hunt. You know, bottomlands obviously would have probably been just as is nice, but this will do a, a good job. I always was curious if the glare of my blued barrel on my Manifeltra ever flared birds, uh, or they were seeing my face or my glasses or what. Uh, you just never know, but this is my first um, time I've ever purchased a synthetic uh, gun. Most of my other guns have all wooden stock. Uh, very, very, uh, I was very, very adamant that I, I, I always loved wooden stocks, but they don't even make this gun with a wooden stock. So it was the only option that I could come up with. Uh, <coughs> I think they're all walnut, every one of them. Uh, but the kickoff was another feature that, like I said, the reliability was, was the main feature for it. Um, the ability to shoot extremely fast, probably not. I waste enough shells as it is, so I don't need to waste shells in uh, one in 2.5 seconds versus uh, six seconds, honestly. Um, gives me pause to uh, before I send out that third shell at uh, 50 yards, you know, that damn it, boom. You know, you've been there, everybody's been there. So really, 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 really happy with this. This is, this is beautiful, perfect. The raised rib right here. It's got a mid bead on it. It's got a mid bead right here. It's got a fiber optic sight right here. Uh, but getting back, uh, how much of this run me? Uh, my local, I went to my local dealer and I asked him, you know, give me a price on it. And he gave me a price of, you know, <coughs> roughly $1,850. Very, very fair price, um, $1,850, uh, you know, no FFL fee, obviously, no shipping fee. So very, very fair fair price for this. From what I looked around, I, I thought it was very fair. Um, but right before Christmas, I was doing some internet research and I came upon this site and they had a discount, coupon discount, and they usually, uh, have the coupons for ice fishing gears, things like that. And uh, so I put it in my cart and it came out and I was like, you know, not only was it um, about $30 less online than, than at, at my gun dealer, um, the sale price dropped at another $183 for me. That was, that, that woke me up. I was like, wow, $183. Not only that, they included a free case of shotgun shells, 250 rounds of, um, they're not, you know, waterfall loads, but they're target loads, but that's not nothing to sneeze at. You know, that's another $100 in value or a little bit more. Uh, so you tack that on to the $183 I'm saving. Yes, there's $19.99 in shipping and I have to pay $35 to my FFL to have it, to have him run me um, uh, through the um, criminal background check. Um, so I was like, that's, that's a hell of a deal. And then when I, so I was doing the checkout and for whatever reason, and I, I can't answer this, uh, they didn't charge sales tax. You know, obviously out, and out of state, uh, but it wasn't out of the country or anything. Um, apparently the state hasn't dropped the requirement of uh, collecting sales tax for every state that you that they ship to. Uh, so I got it without the extra $95 in sales tax. Now, I'm supposed to pay that myself when I get that. So, you know, anybody from the, the IRS is looking I will I will I promise I will pay it uh, but uh, anyways I saved you know close to two hundred dollars on this maybe close to actually close to 300 with the uh, box of shells so extremely happy and it was something I was like well I'll buy this gun. I'll, <laughs> I'll buy this gun uh, next spring or something like that but I, it was just something I couldn't pass up um, yeah I put it on my credit card but I paid my credit card off right away and I get I get the reward points so I'll take it um, 
extremely happy, can't wait to play with it. It's 13 below out, it's a 40 mile an hour gust of wind, minus 36 wind chill factor. Uh, so it's gonna be a while before I get the chance to get, get out and run a few shells through this thing. But honestly, I can't wait. I gotta put the Wheelie Bird together. I'll do a video actually on that. I'll put it, put it together and I'll do a video on it. Um, and then I'll do a shot cam video as well. Um, and show you guys uh, the fun I'm having with it and whether I think it's worth it to buy. Uh, again, this video is not about, you know, this is what you need to buy. This is what I bought. This is what I thought about it. Um, let me know what you think. If you have one and you like it or you didn't like it or whatever, and uh, put it in the comments below. I'd love to read about it. Um, you know, I'm stuck with this, so uh, I'm looking forward to it. So happy. Uh, hopefully, your experience with this gun uh, will um, be something that I'll enjoy reading instead of going, oh man, what did I do? But uh, can't wait to get out in the field. So until next time, take care, happy hunting. We'll see you next time.